welcome to Fold It Lab Report 13. I am BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design, Seattle, Washington, with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning in to our Fold It Lab Reports, we release these monthly videos to update you about the recent research we've been doing with Fold It. First off, thank you for sticking with us for a full year. Exactly 12 months ago, on October 1st, 2019, we posted our first lab report video as a kind of experiment to help improve communications between the scientists behind the scenes in Foldit and the Foldit players. I think these videos have largely been a success. Uh, we've been able to share information about more of the lab work that we do here at the Institute. I've also personally enjoyed digging into the gritty details of protein design in our design of the month segment, um, and we have a great one today. So we will continue to produce these monthly videos and we're thinking hard about how we can improve them even further. We are also planning to release some more special topics videos, uh, so you can look forward to that. Um, and if you have any suggestions about things you'd like to see or improvements that we can make, uh, please drop a comment below. News! This month, we started rolling out a brand new Foldit feature called Foldit Metrics. Metrics are a new type of objective for Foldit puzzles and they are meant to help you design better proteins. The first area where you will see Foldit metrics will be in our protein binder design puzzles. Um, if you've been following along in recent videos, uh, you've heard me harp about our binder metrics. Um, these are things like shape complementarity and predicted binding energy and SASA. Um, these are metrics that we know from lab experience help to improve binder designs. Um, so we feel very confident that if Foldit players can access and optimize these metrics, we can improve our success of binders in Foldit. Metrics are a little bit different from other objectives in Foldit because metrics are very, very slow to compute. Because the metrics are so slow, Foldit puzzles with metrics will behave a little bit differently from other Foldit puzzles. For starters, when you change your protein solution in one of these puzzles, your score will go gray while the metrics catch up in the background. You can always disable metrics if you don't want to worry about them in the early game, for example. Uh, but remember to enable them eventually so that you can receive metric bonuses and register your score on the Foldit leaderboards. Also, note that recipes will have to be modified to work well with the new metrics. Uh, you should see the blog. We have more details about how you can edit recipes um, to handle the new metrics. It will probably take us some time to figure out exactly the best way to use them effectively in Foldit. Um, but if you run into sticking points or difficulties using the metrics, please do not hesitate to leave us feedback on the Foldit website. And you can read all about the new metrics on the Foldit blog. We have more details there. Puzzle updates. This month we have three puzzle updates. Uh, the first two are our coronavirus binder design puzzles and our coronavirus anti-inflammatory binder design puzzles. Both of these puzzles will start to see new updates in the coming months as we start to take advantage of the brand new binder metrics. Our third puzzle update is in symmetric design. We have been continuing to run hydrogen bond network design puzzles with symmetric trimers. These are puzzles with three identical protein chains that should come together to form a symmetric trimer. We recently made some changes to the HBON network objective, um, which we think should improve the quality of HBON networks in Foldit designs. We had noticed that a lot of high scoring networks in these puzzle solutions contained problematic hydrogen bonds. These are poor scoring hydrogen bonds with uh, suboptimal geometry or distances between the, the hydrogen bond acceptor and the hydrogen bond donor. We were worried about these low quality hydrogen bonds because we think they might jeopardize the entire network and cause the protein not to fold correctly. Our changes mean that hydrogen bond networks will be a little bit more difficult to design now, but we think it will lead to more realistic networks. Since we made these changes, the latest puzzle results have been looking really good. Um, and on that note, I want to take us to our design of the month. This month, we are going to be looking at a solution from puzzle 1888. This solution was shared with us by Skippy Skates. And if we take a look at it here, um, we see that it's a nice trimer of three helix bundles, which is very nice. We like that these bundles are offset from one another. Not, they're not parallel aligned with the symmetric axis, but they 
they are aligned askew to one another. Um, and the reason we like that is because if we look at the individual monomer unit, we see that all of these helices have some blue residues, blue polar residues sprinkled on the outside. Um, at the same time, there are these patches of orange hydrophobic residues that make contacts with symmetric units and should cause very tight binding when these come together. Furthermore, if we zoom in on the middle, we see a great hydrogen bond network that Skippy has designed. Um, this is really nice. These, uh, these polar groups are nice and buried in the core of the protein, so we think that these should be uh, strong hydrogen bonds if these residues are correctly oriented. Um, there is a, um, it looks like this, this peripheral hydrogen bond on the, the outside is, um, is not scoring great, but we're not too worried about that because it does seem that solvent, some water can get in there and, and, um, and satisfy these residues if they don't quite make a hydrogen bond. Um, but aside from that, every residue in this hydrogen bond is completely satisfied. Um, so this is a, uh, a really excellent network um, we like the arrangements of the subunits um, and how they come together with a, a kind of small limited interface on each end with still plenty of hydrophobic contacts for tight binding. So this is a really uh, excellent design by Skippy Skates. We'd love to see many more designs like this. Remember to share your designs with us using the Upload for Scientists button in the Save menu. Um, we always love to see uh, what Foldit players are excited about and what your favorite solutions are for a puzzle. That's all the updates we have for you this month. Uh, in October, we will have office hours from Beta Helix and myself, BKEP. Um, so keep an eye on the website and our Discord channel for announcements about when those office hours will be scheduled. Thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next month.